வெல்கம் டு ரா ஆன்லைன் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் அசோக் அசிஸ்டன்ட் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஆஃப் மைக்ரோபயாலஜி ஸோ டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லேர்ன் ஒன் ஆஃப் த மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன் விச் இஸ் கோயிங் டு அஃபெக்ட் அவர் சென்ட்ரல் நவர் சிஸ்டம் விச் இஸ் தி அக்யூட் பேக்டல் மெனஜைட்டஸ் ஸோ யூ ஆல் நோ லைக் வாட் இஸ் வாட் யூ மீன் பை த டம் ஐட்டஸ் ஸோ எனி இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி தி ஐட்டஸ் ஸோ ஹியர் தர் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி தி இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் ஆஃப் த லெப்டோ மெனஜஸ் விச் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் தி மெனஜைட்டஸ் ஸோ த இட்டியாலஜி இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி தி பேக்டீரியல் ஹியர் So depending upon the etiology, like we will be classifying the particular thing into various etiological thing. Example, if any meningitis which is occurring due to the mycobacterium tuberculosis, it is going to be the tuberculosis meningitis. In case, if it is going to be due to viral origin, it is going to be something called as viral meningitis. So here, like we are going to learn only about the bacterial meningitis. So we are not going to learn about the tuberculosis or viral etiology. So here, like we are going to learn about the organisms like Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, then Klebsiella, Escherichia coli, then we have the Listeria. So depending upon the age group, like these uh, particular organisms are going to cause the infection. So depending upon the periodicity, like we call it as an acute or chronic. If it is going to be a long term meningitis, so it is going to be the chronic. In case if it is going to be an acute duration, it is going to be the acute bacterial meningitis. So let us go into our topic. So today we are going to study about the acute bacterial meningitis. So before going into the topic, like we just want to learn what is the definition of this particular thing. So, meningitis, it is nothing but the inflammation of leptomeninges. So, leptomeninges is nothing but what? So, leptomeninges, again, it is going to get comprises of three layers. One is going to be the arachnoid matter and one is going to be the biomatter. And in between that, there is going to be something called subarachnoid space. So, these three, we call it as leptomeninges. So, any inflammation which is going to happen in this particular thing, like we will be calling them as leptomeningeal inflammation, which is nothing but the meningitis. So, let us go into the predisposing factor. So, there are various predisposing factors. These seven are very important. So, the first thing is going to be the age group. So, the neonates are actually like more prone for this kind of invasive infection. So, the reason why the neonates are more prone is that they are going to be like having less amount of cell-mediated immunity and also the humoral immunities are also going to be very less in case of neonatal population. So, these population are more prone for this kind of invasive infection like meningitis. again like poor vaccination status like uh, according to our immunization schedule like we are giving a good amount of uh, vaccination so again like this vaccination is going to produce a certain amount of immunity again like they are not going to get any infection due to the immunity which is provided by the vaccine but here what is going to happen is that certain thing like socio economic status which may be low and uh, other uh, thing like which may contribute for the poor vaccination so the child may not get the proper vaccination or immunization so those kind of children they will be having less amount of uh, cell mediated immunity which is going to be there due to the vaccination so here again they are more prone for infection like streptococcus pneumoniae or haemophilus influenzae infection so which is actually a vaccine preventable infection and these are the pathogen which is going to cause infections like pneumonia and meningitis and third thing is going to be the poor lifestyle so poor lifestyle the patient could be an alcoholic or a smoker again like you all know like when we are going to get expose ourselves to cigarette smoking and the smoking automatically both our humoral immunity and cell mediated immune response is going to get hampered so any this kind of lifestyle habit is going to put us into a high risk of invasive infection like this kind of meningitis and the fourth thing is going to be the post transplantation immunosuppression so what do you mean by the term post transplantation immunosuppression so you all know immunosuppression there are two terminologies one is going to be the immunosuppression and immunocompromises whenever like we are going to give some medication or we are going to do something and thereby going to reduce the patient immune response that is going to be the immunosuppression which is seen like post transplantation or anything and there is something called immunocompromises where the patient he himself they may be having something like uh, underlying uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or the patient may be having like primary or secondary immunodeficiency disorder so you all know what is primary and what is secondary immunodeficiency disorder so the few example for primary immunodeficiency disorder something like humoral immunodeficiency disorder or anything like uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor and disorder so those kind of uh, thing the patient can uh, have an uh, thing and something like uh, secondary immunodeficiency disorder so secondary immunodeficiency disorder the patient is going to have something like hiv infection again like what is going to happen is that the patient is going to have and uh, these kind of uh, thing the patient is going to have an uh, less amount of cd4 cell again the patient is going to have an high risk of invasive infection so can you tell like how the particular hiv infection is going to lead to this kind of infection invasive infection so this could be also an uh, opportunistic infection so patient who is going to suffer from something like a hiv they are going to have a less amount of cd4 cell so you all know cd4 cell is the main cell which is going to act as an regulator cell which is going to tell the particular cell to 
do what function like it is a particular regulator cell which is going to tell the neutrophil to go and act against the particular bacteria or eosinophil to go and act against the parasite so when the particular cd4 cell is going to get destroyed the entire immune system drops down so here again the patient is going to have high rate of opportunistic infection so one of the opportunistic infection could be this kind of invasive infection like meningitis and post transplantation immunosuppression what is going to happen is that the patient is going to undergo something like a liver failure or any failure so the patient example like we can take a case of liver failure so what is going to happen is that we, may, we are going to go for procedure like a transplantation so we are going to replace the patient's diseased liver with the another recipient donor liver so what is going to happen is that for the prevention of graft rejection and graft acceptance what we are going to do is that we are going to put the patient on drug like immunosuppressive drug example can be like a cyclosporin or tacrolimus like we are going to put the patient so what is going to happen is that due to this kind of drug the patient's immune system is going to go down so again when the immune system is going to go down both cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity is going to come down and the patient has the high chance of opportunistic infection especially this kind of systemic invasive infection and fifth thing is going to be the splenectomy so you all know like spleen is the main organ which is going to take care of capsulated organism so when again like when there is no spleen patient may be having something like thalassemia for which the patient would have undergone something like prophylactic splenectomy so again so there is no spleen so there is no organ to take care of this kind of capsulated organism so the patient is going to go for this kind of infection with the capsulated organism especially the schemophilus and streptococcus pneumoniae so the sixth thing is going to be the csf shunt so presence of csf shunt again like there is going to be high risk of meningitis how this kind of csf shunt is going to cause infection can you tell like what is the csf shunt first of all when some babies or some abnormalities are there like anything like hydrocephalus is there so what is going to happen is that we are going to do some surgery and we are going to do some shunting procedure where we are going to connect especially like we are going to place a tube in between the ventricle and the we are going to connect the particular tube opening to the abdomen or like gi tract so what is going to happen is that there is going to be opening right so with the help of that opening that the particular organism is going to ascend through the tube and going to reach the ventricle there it is going to cause the infection and it is the csf shunt associated infection again the patient can have severe form of meningitis due to the presence of this infected csf shunt and the seventh is going to be the problem with the blood brain barrier so any breach in the blood brain barrier example there can be like a trauma or road traffic accident so there is going to be a breach in blood brain barrier again the organisms can easily go to the blood and from the blood it can easily go to the brain and can cause the infection and not only brain like it is going to reach the central nervous system easily like and that way it is going to cause the various forms of infection so now with this predisposing factor keeping we know like what are the various predisposing factor like which is going to predispose us to the acute 